Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave Podcast. We are here for week two, episode two of season two of House of the Dragon on HBO and HBO Max. We're here to review that episode with you guys. We'll talk non-spoilers, and then we'll dive into the spoiler conversation. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darian Scalamoni. For episode two, we have Liz Seiko. Hello. As well as the returning Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. So this is our dragon crew. Mm. We also have Ooh. Mark, who's going to be popping into some mm. episodes. We're going to rotate people in and out um, to talk dragons with you guys. Um, and so we didn't get Liz's take on the premiere episode of season two, but I know some of her issues with the first episode kind of go into episode two. So if you wanted to talk about that first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say I'm really I'm over the incest of this show. Um, I know that that's kind of in the Game of Thrones world, but I just feel like every relationship has it and it's blocking me from like supporting these relationships. I know that it's part of the world, but it's literally every relationship. It's like either siblings or a cousin or an uncle. And I'm like, I got, I have the ick and I don't know how to get out of it so that I can appreciate the story. Um, and literally the only relationship that is not incest based is the one that you're not supposed to like be supportive rooting of. supportive yeah. of because they're supposed to be like dirty because he's supposed to be pure in a white cloak. So I'm coming in very biased right now where I'm just like really over that part of it. And I wish that I wasn't so affected by their release. And for that reason, Liz will not be. No, <laughs> and Liz will not be returning to the table. No. Um, I was saying right before we started recording, when you brought that up, that there are certain relationships that I haven't even completely correlated to the fact that they, it is incestual, but it is, it is heavy handed. Yeah. In the like, show, yeah. More so than Thrones. So I can understand the criticism. I can understand that sort of blockade in terms of the story. Um, I think above all else though, this episode unfortunately doesn't completely pick up for where the ending of the first episode leaves off. Mm. Like we're in such a, a crazy moment. I mean, mm. Vinny and I talked about it in our review for the first episode, which you guys should check out if you guys haven't yet, but it ends with um, a, a child being murdered. Yeah. And there are moments within this episode that, that kind of live up to that same sort of um i don't know how to say it. Just like yeah yeah same sort of stakes um but there are certain moments in this episode that kind of i don't know it, it had a different kind of pace this week that i didn't love as much i didn't completely dislike the episode but it didn't hit me the same way that the premiere did Vinny, i don't know how you felt yeah i i agree with that i feel that this episode felt different but i think it was also necessary that it feels different because this episode focused primarily on the aftermath of mm -hmm. the murder of Prince Chaseris. So we're really just dealing with those emotions that this entire episode. So it is a lot of setup for what is to come. But I am, I did really enjoy what they did in this episode. Albeit different, albeit like obviously I feel we, you know, as audiences, we enjoy uh, something more akin to episode one where. It's a little bit more tense, a little bit more in your face, in your face. Yeah, yeah. Hoo right? Um, in this, it's still necessary. I still enjoyed the setup. You know, we're getting the side of Aegon now. Aegon is filled with rage. He's filled with sadness. He's making more and more foolish mistakes. We're getting the we talked about in week one about how Otto was gonna get kicked out of there and he does so we're seeing that conflict with auto to build up we also see the uh, uh, conflict on Rhaenyra's side with Damon and Damon is that lone wolf wild card very the paralleling uh, Amont on you know team green so now he just got on his dragon and up up and went you know mm -hmm. who knows if he's actually going to Heron Hall or, or what he's doing but I'm 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 still very excited. Yeah, I'm still very excited. Yeah, I think it's very heavy on politics and setup. Like Vinny had just said this episode, like there's a lot of things to come. We did exclusively talk about um, when Aegon was going to remove Otto's hand, and it mm -hmm. came a little bit quicker than I thought it was going to. Did Same. it? But Same. yeah, I thought I thought it was going to maybe take a couple of episodes. Um, however, it was like 
I can't wait to see the implosion of like yeah. what happens. Like yeah. that's the stakes for me that I'm really excited about. I don't know if we're necessarily like rooting for one side versus the other, but there's just so much baked in the high tower drama right now that I'm mm-hmm. so invested in where I felt like in the first season, I was so much more invested in the Targaryen storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's definitely a lot more happening on team green rather than team black right now. Um, albeit they're 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 suicided or um this assassination attempts left and right from both sides now happening yeah. um and we get that epic scene between eric and eric um as i try to navigate this where their names are literally <laughs> different by one letter yeah. yeah but liz how did you feel about that scene in particular and maybe like sort of the drama of um Otto not no longer being hand and him giving it to Kristen mm. which I wasn't expecting we didn't even no th- I didn't we, expect that neither one of us said that that was mm. going to be the case that threw me completely for a loop and I was yeah. like this is the exact wrong fucking decision for you to be making so yeah. Liz you could dive in and then throw it to Vinny no I agree with you guys that was probably the most shocking part of that whole season or the whole episode mm. for me was when he asked for uh him to be dismissed essentially and I thought that Otto was going to fight back a little bit more and be like, like, no, like I need to help you with this. But he, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think he was, he was already done before it actually happened. And he was like, I gotta leave this kid. Like he's, he's a mess. Um, and also I think Otto's a smart enough character. He's not very likable, but I think he's a smart enough character to see when chaos is starting to unveil itself. And he's in danger just from being that close to a leader like him. Mm. Um, so I think he knew that he had to get out of there and I'm interested mm. to see what happens if he just stays a middleman and kind of like goes and disappears or if he, I would be interested to see if he goes to the Targaryen side at all to try to amend his relationship with them. Mm. Cause he also gives me the vibe that he needs to have his hand in the pot. He's not just going to sit quietly on the sidelines. He's already had a taste of power. And so I don't think he's going to give up the reins that easy. See, I think he's just more opportunity. I disagree a little bit because I think he's more opportunistic. And I think when Viserys was uh, Patty Considine's character's name, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When it came to Viserys and getting Allison to sort of Mm -hmm. seduce him, he saw an opening that was easily like flexible. He was able to make it malleable for himself and his family and work a way in. And his daughter was so innocent. I mean, she's 14 years old and Mm -hmm. and marrying this 50 year old, whatever he or six. I don't know how old he was in the first season, but Mm -hmm. in the beginning, but with Aegon, He is just like, this kid will not listen to anyone. Like he has so, he's so of his own mind. Um, He doesn't want, like even the, like it's Otto's decision, political decision to have um, his great grandson literally on display for everybody with his head being sewn back onto his Mm -hmm. body. And that's where I think Otto is like coming from a place where he's opportunistic, but I don't think, I think he's still, he cares about his family. And I think that if he can't get what he wants to get out of it, he's just going to disappear. Like he said, I, I personally don't see him going to the side of the Targaryens. You don't think though, because at the end of the day, I also do believe that his character wants what's good for the realm. He doesn't necessarily want just like chaos to happen. So you don't think that he would try to like jump sides if that meant for the better of, like the realm and for the people. I couldn't see that, but it's possible. Yeah. But I, I, I personally couldn't see it, but maybe. I just can't see him like going and disappearing mm. for like the rest of the show. Yeah, maybe not the rest of the show, but I can see him going off for a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. What Vinny? do you think, Benny? I think that he's going to try to butt in, personally. I think that, you know. Butt in on the Targaryens? Butt in on the whole tension. Even though he's been kicked out of a position of power, he is going to to try. Um, And I think he's going to be dead by the end of the season. I think Aegon's killing him no matter what. I don't know. I felt that from the moment that scene was happening. I thought it was going to happen. My brother and I were sitting there like, what are you doing? Chop his head off. When he turned his back to open the door, I was like, this man's dead. Who turns your back on somebody like that crazy? And I think it's going to be Aegon doing it like a hundred percent. Like, or or maybe, maybe he orders Kristen to do it, which would be Mm. even crazier. Like in front of his mother. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. we love that yeah. we love that tension we love that drama sorry Vinny. <laughs> no no you're good um 
kind of actually pivoting a little bit with Aegon though i feel like what the screenwriters are trying to do here is they're trying to set up a lot of sympathy for him you know like we see him break multiple times in a very sympathetic light um and although obviously like he although he's an asshole and like you know like you kind of don't want to root for him i feel like the writers are they they are adding these moments like uh after the assassination goes wrong allison walks in he's just sobbing crying so i don't know i don't know me i don't think we will see aegon be like a so tyrannical to that point i think he's going to be tyrannical but not to the degree that we may think he may be. I think he's more reactionary yes, than yeah. tyrannical. I think that he comes from a place of like, well, I'm the one with all this power, so why the fuck am I not doing something about it? Yeah. And he kind of displays that in dialogue and mm-hmm. through his actions and things like that. I mean, he had one... Who Who was the... was? Is it Eamon that has the conversation with him about how Otto was his hand? That was um, Larius. Larius, Tarver. Larius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like... That was a one episode transition of Laris being like, you know, like you don't need to listen to this guy just because he was he's respected and he's been the hand for a long time of Mm -hmm. somebody that was your father. Like you don't need that, you know, and so I think that there is going to be something else that happens to Team Green that is going to make him just lose his shit. Um, But at the same time, I don't think we talked about this last week, too. He's Mm -hmm. not Joffrey. Like he he's not the same sort of ill he doesn't come from the same ilk yeah but um no i would i would i would agree with i i I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with this character because i think that um obviously like with the time transition to like we're seeing a whole different version of Aegon. like i feel like aemond was the character that the focus was on so much with mm. their family in the first season towards the back end and now it's very focused on Aegon, obviously and his relationship with helena and um Mm -hmm. like i said so much of it has been high tower focused yeah so far this season which is um kind of interesting for me and i think it's just because i also am comparing this show a lot to game of thrones which i'm sure a lot of other viewers are too Mm -hmm. i think that and i don't know if this is going to hurt them or make it a better show in the end is that they're trying to make all of their character characters um have some sort of empathetic like something empathetic that an audience member can relate to them. Well, I think with game of Thrones, it was a little bit more cut and clear of like, you know, this person's like horrible to their core Mm -hmm. and like, you are supposed to dislike them, which it's kind of making me, um, a little, I don't want to say confused, but maybe a little bit confused as a viewer to figure out like, okay, but who am I actually supposed to be like Mm -hmm. rooting for right now? Yeah. I, I enjoy that though. Do you? I do because I feel like it is a complex narrative. Mm-hmm. And it is a, I mean, even Game of Thrones had a complex and realistic take of morality. You know, it wasn't so black and white. It was this very blurred gray line. So that's what I enjoyed about season one too, where it's like even people you see it on social media, like people were taking sides. Mm-hmm. Of like there was no like definite like, all right, this is uh team black all the way or team green all the way no like people felt empathy for both sides and and there's every character in in a realistic way of how in real life you know both sides has flaws and they also have redeeming qualities as well so i really enjoy it but i can i can see your perspective because well i feel like you come out of season one being like i'm totally on rhaenyra's side and now for season two Mm -hmm. i'm a little bit more like Oh, the, like Team Green is just a hot mess. Like they don't know yeah. what they're doing, which then gets me empathetic towards them because they're all just like drowning in this power that they now don't know what to do with. Are you on a team right now, though, like black or green or either of you? Or are you just kind of flipping back and forth with this season? So I think I'm more on team black, but I but at the same time, like I you come in from the perspective in the beginning of the episode, like you were talking about how the only relationship you're somewhat rooting for having empathy towards is on team green. And I do think that there are viewers that are like you. I don't want to speak like I'm not, I haven't checked social media. Maybe you have any, but like, Mm -hmm. I feel like most people are team black, especially based on 
the end result of the first season but then at the same time it's like well they just fucking murdered a mm. kid well that's the thing it's like you keep flipping back and forth because you're like you're both morally corrupt yeah so it's yeah. it's definitely i don't know it's it's part of what adds that drama though to it but i can i can understand like i, I understand both perspectives i understand why you love it so much mm. i understand why you're not liking it as much to me, I'm just kind of here for the ride. You're like, let's <laughs> like, see what I'm like, right now, I'm enjoying all the drama. <laughs> and like, I'm yeah. like, I just want to see people die all the time. It's fucking Game of Thrones. So, I don't know. Vinny? Mm. Um, really, the, the, I guess, quote-unquote, politically correct answer would be that there is no right side and, and, and yada yada. I'm Team Black, though. <laughs> um, I, let's go, Team Black! I, I love Rhaenyra's character mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And I even, like, albeit his flaws, I enjoy watching Damon so much. Like, even in his most, like, nastiest moments. Like, I fucking love... You're still like, love wherever you go, I go. <laughs> yeah, that's and I love, mentality. And I love, uh, I love his performance, too, Matt Smith. So... Yeah. I'm Team Black, and I also like low key the aesthetic of Team Black. Of like, you know, Rhaenyra is kind of the, is is his underdog, you know, yeah. and 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 her sons are are bastards and not respected, but they are her sons are uh, at least I think we could all agree are a lot more likable than Aegon and Aemon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot more respectable people. So. I would agree with that. I also it's it's weird for me too because like I love Olivia Cook like as an actress yep. like absolutely adore her and yeah. she's in one of my favorite. Me and her on the Dying Girls literally like one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, but at the same time I like there's something about her character in this where I'm like I don't want to root for you because I know that you were banging your best friend's dad. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't yeah. like, I can't get that out of my fucking head. But at the same time, like, see, that's how I feel about this entire show is I'm like, <laughs> the whole show is, why are you banging your sibling? I'm like, why are you banging her dad? Why are you doing all this? I'm like, I don't care what happens to you. You're literally married to your brother. Yeah. Like, what? I know. Well, it, that's, mm. and the, I think that in the first season too, especially like in the scene with Millie Alcock and, mm -hmm. and Matt Smith, everyone was like, Oh my God, what's about to happen? Like, mm. what is going on? And then it like weirdly gets more acceptable as Emma Darcy. Like mm. from a from an audience perspective, it feels like people are just like, oh, well, yeah, they should get together now. And it's like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? That's your uncle, dude. Like, what is happening? That's what I mean. I feel like with this show, you just have to be like, I think you have to go from your point of view and just, just be, be like, there for the ride, just don't man. think about the actual relationship and who's like yeah. connected to who in order to like swallow the pill of, like, well this, because i think that show. i don't know if i've talked about this on here before but like i don't even know how you explain you could probably encompass it better Vinny. but like what this show like the genre is like what time period is this what is it like i know it's fantasy but like uh it's a low dark fantasy yeah like it's like medieval yeah. like i'm not into that before I saw Thrones, yeah. and then I loved Game of Thrones. Like it was, if, I feel like most people, if they haven't seen Game of Thrones yet, and you're like, you should watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. Usually the response is, I'm not really into things like that. And you're like, no, but you will be. Mm -hmm. Because it's so engrossing, and it's so remarkably written, mm -hmm. and it's so remarkably acted. And I do feel like, no, no, I don't think, and we're only two episodes into season two of House of the Dragon. I don't think it reaches... It hasn't reached Thrones for me yet at all. I still think, it, like, I think Thrones is like the upper echelon of mm. scripted television yeah. ever. And I think a lot of people feel that way, despite what the ending might have been. But at the same time, it gets me excited week to week for this show. And a lot of shows don't have that ability mm. anymore. True. So, like, that's why I think that's my perspective, too. I'm like, this is just a really engrossing story. Regardless of how I might feel personally about some of the relationships and how disgusting it is, it's like, oh, that has no impact on my life. Let's just yeah. keep going along for the ride because this story is so crazy. And the Game of Thrones world is so crazy. Like, let's be honest. Like, they ha they have this, this nature about them that is so obviously different than anything else that came before it that it just mm -hmm. kind of rips you into it. And you're just like completely mm -hmm. there for it. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. But that's why I come from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's missing for me with this show, um, and I'd be interested to hear if you guys think the same thing, is Game of Thrones had just a perfect way of bringing in slight comedy into it. And I don't think they've actually started to do that yet with House of the Dragon. I feel like it's pretty practically just straight drama the whole time. And like, I really want those 
I wouldn't say like laugh out loud moments, but moments where you can kind of like see the full character scope of somebody mm -hmm. that's like enjoying life or like making a, a joke every once in a while. And I don't think they have a character like that, mm -hmm. which makes it just kind of like hard to watch if it's just like serious, serious, serious over and over again. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree or no? I, yeah, I, it's a very valid point. I, um, I, I think that I apologize. I'm trying to format my, mm -hmm. my thoughts right now. It's a valid point for me. It didn't really, it doesn't really irk me as of right now, because I feel like albeit like game of Thrones was game of Thrones. And this is its own thing. And this is telling like one of the most pivotal moments of the history and the lore. So I almost feel like they don't have enough time to spare in, um, for like comedy and stuff. You know mm. what I'm trying to say? Okay, I do. Yeah. I would, I think it's a fair point too. Like I haven't, I haven't thought about that at all. Like same as Vinny, like it hasn't taken me out of it necessarily, but I do agree. And I do think that might be part of the reason why I like Thrones better in the first couple seasons too. Like, I mean, Tyrion represented so much of that. That's what right? I mean, Like yeah. that's what his character was. And that's why his character was so beloved by pretty much everybody. I don't know if... I've ever met somebody that didn't watch Thrones and Tyrion wasn't at least in their top like three characters. Yeah. yeah. So I could totally see that. I think there's a little bit of that where there definitely was in the first season of, of Damon where he's like this, he has this sixth sense about him that adds to his character. And that's why I think we want to see more of Matt Smith. Mm -hmm. And we haven't gotten mm -hmm. a lot of him through two episodes. I know you were talking about how you wanted to see more of that. I do. I want to see episode. more of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't even see anything of Rhaenyra in the first episode. It was just her. I think she only said the one the line. The one line. We actually yeah. said we liked that, but. I did too. But like, I'm ready for their for their partnership to really start being on the screen more. I yeah, think see, I don't know it. if that, I, I have a feeling that's not going to, so much of the season is going to be the war. Or mm. like, at least if it's not getting us right into the war, it's going to be leading up to and then getting us on a bookend where we're getting right into the war. Mm. Mm. So I don't know. I, I, like, I think the relate. I mean, the only relationship they're kind of building right now, and it's strictly sexual, is is Allison and Kristen. Like, in terms of like a romantic sense. Yeah. But, well, I don't mean their partnership, like we're seeing their marriage on screen. Like, I just want them to both have more screen time because I think that mm. both actors are incredible. And like, yeah. I want to see their work. And I, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I wish that they would have more screen time. Mm. I, yeah. Should we talk about the Eric scene? It's the biggest Which one? scene yes. probably in the, in the, oh, the, in the, the brother on the brothers. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sir Eric gets right. Sir Eric yeah. gets sent from Kristen from, um, team green to infiltrate team black uh, posing as his twin brother and mm -hmm. to assassinate Rhaenyra. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, a, it is a decision that is made strictly by Kristen, which is also insane mm. when you think about it. Like, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't even the hand at that time. Yet, yeah. Right. Yeah. No. He wasn't even the hand. He comes to this decision saying, and I think part of it obviously is because he's dealing with his own internal struggles and his battles of like, mm. he isn't, he doesn't feel great about himself. By the way, he before we dive guilty. into this, he feels very <laughs> guilty. People have been talking shit online to Fabian Frankel in the comments and sending him death threats. Don't be a fucking piece of shit, okay? Don't Wait, do what? that. Why? Because of his character. Listen, guys. Oh, it's entertainment. Stop. It's television. I saw it before he recorded. I wanted to say something. He's a fantastic actor. He seems like a really great guy. It's a fucking television show, so relax. Yeah. So I'm going to go. We, we can't separate reality from fiction. It's, it's kind of insane to me. Yeah. So don't be a piece of shit and... Fuck you guys if you're doing that. His character didn't even do anything like that horrible, no, I feel like. No. <laughs> People suck. Anyway, yeah. regardless, he's dealing with his guilt that he is feeling for sleeping with the king's mother. And so he sends Sir Eric to go and for this assassination attempt. Mm. And what I think was the best scene of the, of mm -hmm. the episode, um, the lead up to it, and then the eventual battle between the twin brothers, which ends in both of their demises. Which so I didn't expect that. I didn't either. Mm -hmm. So Vinny, you want to start and then we'll jump to Liz. Yeah. Uh, one, how thrilling of a battle that was, how intense it was. Also, um, I mean, we speak about humor and although it wasn't like humorous, I did find it funny when, uh, one of the, um, one of the guards that Rhaenyra calls in, says, which one is it? <laughs> which one yeah. is it? Right. And, like, and she's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't fucking know. 
was like, I don't know which one it is. It's like, neither can the audience. Nobody has yeah. any idea who's who. I, th- I thought that was pretty funny. And um, I, yeah, it's just a really thrilling scene. And I feel like we didn't, I, I could, my memory's kind of faded by now, but I feel like we didn't see much of them in season one. But the short period of time that we are with them in season two, they are both very honorable people. Very, both very respectable people. And that battle and then him saying, Rhaenyra, like, I'm sorry. And, you know, falling, falling onto his sword, sword was, was powerful. It was really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't expect him to kill himself. Yeah. yeah. That really took me by surprise. Hmm. Um, no, I thought the battle scene was great. I loved that we didn't know who, what was who was winning, who was losing, because it was like, oh my god, like, what, who, what is gonna happen? Um, mm. I also did like the build up of the whole time. You kind of being like, no way, this guy's getting into the castle. Mm. Oh, no way, this guy's gonna be able to go find her. And then he just like does everything like was perfect for mm. him, his situation. Um, yeah, I mean, the one thing that I think was a little bit like, there's no way he was actually going to kill Rhaenyra yeah. in yeah. season two, episode two. Yeah. So there was mm-hmm. that little <clears throat> levity of being like, there's no way he actually succeeds in this mission. Yes, he may be injuring her possibly, but there's no way her death happens. Mm-hmm. Even though it is a Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones show, That's, there's no way. That was way. the point my brother brought up where he's like, he's like, I don't know, bro. Like, thrown people to die left and right sometimes. Yeah, but the, like, I agree not with her you. because I then the whole war's done. The war's done. Yeah. yeah. The war's yeah. done. The story's finished if yeah, she yeah. dies. I, I would agree with you. Um, I do think it was emblematic of Eric's death too and just like the battle that the two brothers have with one another where, the, the, and like Vinny said, they're both honorable to their causes, right? Like Eric leaves team um green because he just doesn't believe like he's seeing Aegon going to brothels and living mm-hmm. this life that he doesn't believe in and he thinks rainier is a stronger leader when on the other hand eric doesn't agree with necessarily their side mm-hmm. and they both die n- and not for their leader like they die for themselves which mm-hmm. i think is very emblematic of like the chaotic nature of what this world is currently representing yeah in the lore of what we're seeing like nobody has any idea what the fuck is going on basically on any given day. You know what I mean? And I think that what Thrones did, which, which I think adds a better, like a different, I shouldn't say better, but it adds a different layer to house of the dragon in comparison to Thrones. Because like you were saying, maybe this goes off of the point you made earlier where you were like, I don't really know who I should be rooting for. I think the point is that you, you, you're not supposed to really have a pure thought. They don't want it to be as cut and dry. You know, like everybody rooted for the Starks. Mm-hmm. Like that was the thing mm-hmm. in Game of Thrones. And in this show, they're like Vinny had said, there's more, there's so much moral gray area. And I think that the brothers are like totally emblematic of like, nobody wants to be alive in this world right now. Mm-hmm. Because like, look at what's happening on both sides. Mm-hmm. Like kids are dying yeah, on you, both sides. You like, just had to kill your brother. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they were willing to do it. Mm-hmm. Just so, so crazy. But yeah, powerful scene. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. scene. I think do, it was a good ending. Do we want to talk about Helena? Good. Yes. Hmm. Helena, and really quick, before we go into Helena, the other thing on the Eric scene that I just thought about, yeah. we get that moment with Missyria. Is that her name? Missyria. The uh, the one who's the prisoner. Oh, yes. yes. Missyria, right? Is that I, her name? I believe so. Something like that. I apologize for saying yeah. the names. The names are hard to keep up with. But we get that moment where she sees Eric coming in, and she goes, just a moment. And then she does nothing about it. Mm. So that was a nice, interesting little wrinkle going forward with her story. And mm. I feel like she's going to play a very crucial part going forward. Just wanted to throw that in I because agree. that could have been something that went over people's heads. Heads. I think mm. she's going to be one of those flip floppy characters that mm. isn't like Laris too. Yeah. Yes. That isn't supporting anybody, but like knows like, oh, I kind of owe her now because she let me go. So maybe mm. I should pay more attention. Um I like how they're kind of sprinkling her in. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested to see what happens. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I um I think she, even from in season one, she was, ma- I don't know if she was officially married, but was going to marry Damon. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I like forgot just, about that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And like just her role in the world is really interesting, you know, because she's really, she doesn't come from a position of power, mm-hmm. but she's just like the white worm. Hmm. What a yeah. name. Missaria. What a name. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, Vinny, yes. Um, yeah. Definitely. Let's talk about Helena because I know you had just brought mm-hmm. it up. 
yeah i i don't have much to talk about her but more of like i i really enjoyed how this episode portrays her because she's a dreamer and she's a bit of a black sheep in the family um and she has this panic attack on the carriage and just i'm really interested of the perspective we're gonna see from her moving forward because we are really compared to season one we're really seeing more of her perspective here and same with Aegon. i feel like in season one we barely got Aegon and helena mm-hmm. but now we're really getting them so i'm excited what role and we talked about this in week one what role of her being a dreamer also is going to play a part in um before i actually wrap up my thoughts this is gonna go on a tangent real quick uh my sister actually brought up there's an easter egg in the room because she like sews and makes like the uh images out of the sewing Mm -hmm. there's a in the background of the scene a man with a wolf's head and it's supposed to be rob stark of the red wedding wow so my sister brought up the idea of like how if she's a dreamer how much into the future has she dreamed about Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah crazy yeah that's kind of nuts that's yeah. a cool Easter egg, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that yeah. for Thrones fans. I yeah. got to go back and watch that now. I didn't even mm-hmm. realize that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Um, Going on to, off of what you're saying, though, with Helena, uh, the panic attack sequence was another scene that I really enjoyed, too, and just seeing that. Because you're right. We didn't get a lot of her in yeah. the first season. Um, And even that look that she has uh, with Aegon as he's coming down the stairs, and they have that yeah. glance at one another, and there's nothing said. It's like... Jesus, man, the, this relationship is so fucked up mm-hmm. beyond the fact that they're siblings. But like, <laughs> yeah. it's it's yeah. so messed up in another way that like they can't even speak about the fact that their child was murdered mm-hmm. and like they can't have a conversation about it because, you know, they haven't had that conversation. No. Um, well, he probably blames her. Yeah, which is a lot of people get blamed in this episode for for that happening. Other Besides him, who's they literally walk past in the first episode and we get that really intense imagery right of the of the boy's bed hmm. with the blood uh spatter with that Kristen sees and that's like right after that i think he goes and talks to eric so yeah. no but helena is definitely gonna play a major role i feel like in the next few weeks at least especially going forward and seeing what that that dreaming sort of does well i hope the dreaming also comes more relevant and present mm-hmm. in the storytelling and that she starts to kind of recognize more of like, okay, what power do I have with this? And like, what, what can I, how can I protect myself with it also? Yeah. Cause yeah. I think she's going to eventually start to realize like she can't trust the people that she's with, mm-hmm. that she has to look out for herself ultimately. Yeah. 100%. Um, and the other, I want to talk about another family member is the scene in the brothel with. Oh, Eamon. 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 I'm glad you brought that up. Cause that was like, probably I want to know like... your thoughts. What do we think of it? Mm. I don't really know how to feel about it. It was very interesting. It was. Um, he obviously, he's very insecure with himself. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to, that's going to play a role going mm-hmm. forward. But at the, like, he's insecure with himself. But at the same time, he believes that nobody can run. Nobody can have the job that his brother has other than him. Like mm-hmm. he believe, and he, but he, he said in the last two weeks, like I'm still loyal to my brother and all these things, but you know, that there's an ulterior motive there. Um, an interesting scene. The only real bit we get from Amon this week. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I do feel like the good stuff with Thrones is the writing so much at the time where they're like laying those nuggets and, and laying the trail for what is to come next. So I definitely think it's impactful. And I think, um, I don't know if we get a name on who he's with, but she's going to play a role too because she's, it seems that she kind of has this power mm-hmm. over Eamon, mm-hmm. which a lot of people we have seen don't have that power over Eamon. So interesting. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that. I really have nothing else to add on that other than the fact of like, you know, who is this woman As- aside from being, you know, just say a, a worker in the brothel, you know, how long has Eamon been with her and how much because i feel like Eamon's, you know very much a sociopath i feel very much does not really value the regard of people's life and doesn't really value anyone around him so hypothetically let's say this woman gets killed 
does he have value in this woman's life or is he just using her to like kind of satisfy his pleasures or does he actually have a real connection to this woman that will be um that will be written upon later in the season only time can tell but it's just me kind of theorizing. no yeah but i think it's interesting too because he also yeah. reveals in the conversation with her he's like i do regret what happened and yeah. like that's the only time he's spoken about that yeah since that moment and the fact that she is the one who's getting this information means that she has more power than almost anybody in the realm Ooh, yeah so yeah. that's the interesting part to me it's like what because uh who's um uh the character in thrones that Tyrion's with who was um she worked in the brothel too I, I don't know. All right, I can't, I can't sure. go through the characters I'm either. But sure. the one that Tyrion's with for a majority of, of mm -hmm. the series, um, I could see it having that kind of effect as well, yeah. that kind of reflecting what happened in Thrones. But that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I feel like we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. We did. Um, that was episode two of House of the Dragon. I'm here for season two. Um, let us know in the comments what you guys thought of the second episode. Are you guys enjoying the season so far? Did you prefer episode two to episode one? What are some of your theories? We love talking theories, obviously, in the comments. And we'd love to have a conversation with you guys in the community in the comments as well. So please be sure to comment, like this video if you guys can, and subscribe to us. We are on the road to 500 subscribers. We'll be covering House of the Dragon every week until the conclusion of the second season. But we have a bunch of other stuff coming for you guys. We're going to be covering the bear next week. Um, we have a review coming out for the bike riders. If it's not already out right now, we also have our reviews for kinds of kindness. We're covering the boys, the acolyte, a bunch of stuff on the channel for you guys to check out. So please be sure to do that if you can. Also, if you could follow us on our social media, we are at cinema wave media and at underscore culture wave media on Instagram, as well as at cinema wave media on TikTok and threads and just culture wave on Facebook. Just signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. I am Liz Seiko. And I am Vinny Albano. And we'll see you guys next time. This is the culture.